In this video, we're going to consider a second trick for solving linear systems of equations, the introduction of the vector displacement. To illustrate this, we're going to consider the ideal linearized Boussinesq equations. These are the equations for incompressible motion with buoyancy. Our three equations are the continuity equation, div u equals zero, the momentum equation, where we have the time derivatives of u, we have the gradients of our reduced pressure, and we have our buoyancy term, alpha g t with buoyancy variable t, and we have our buoyancy equation, d by dt plus u dot grad t zero, where t zero is some background profile of our buoyancy variable temperature. These equations are linearized, but this system here has four variables, um, or it has the vector variable u, the scalar va variable p omega, and the scalar variable t. Um, if we are considering two-dimensional displacements, then we would have a system of four equations with the vector u introducing two different equations. This makes a four by four system, which can be challenging to solve by hand. The vector displacement is going to give us a way to reduce our system by one variable and one equation. So to, to begin our, our experiment here in vector displacements, what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce the vector displacement. So let's let, let there be a vector displacement, and I'm gonna define it in kind of a funny way. I'm gonna define it in terms of u, let u be the time derivative d by dt of the vector displacement psi. We use this funny symbol psi for, uh, for vector displacements fairly typically. So this is our vector displacement right here. This is our vector, vector displacement. Displacement means that it's a motion, um, a, uh, uh, a, physical, a physical motion. Vector means that it is in a direction. So this has units of one over a length, and here's our velocity. And our velocity has units of length per time, like meters per second or centimeters per second. So you can see that the vector velocity is given by the time derivative of the vector displacement. Okay, so why did we do this? Well, if we introduce this new variable psi, then let's take our buoyancy equation um, and then let's let's see what our buoyancy equation looks like with this new variable psi. Well, our new buoyancy equation, d by dt of our temperature plus, and now we're gonna just introduce our vector displacement identity for velocity, that's d by dt of psi dotted into the gradient of t zero, all equal to zero. Okay, so that's interesting. So both of these equations now are a first order derivative in time, whereas previously we had a first order derivative in time on temperature and then no derivative acting on the velocity. So we have a, we have a first order derivative here on both the temperature term and on the vector displacement term. Here's that first derivative on the vector displacement term. Because of that, we can integrate the system integrate, we can integrate the system in time, and this gives us that t plus our vector displacement dotted with t zero is equal to zero. Another way of thinking about this is that if um, if t plus the vector displacement of dotted with grad t zero is zero, then the time derivative of that combined thing will also be zero. So we can we can see this by putting a time derivative outside. The time derivative of zero would itself also be zero. So t plus the displacement dotted with the gradient of t zero, that is equal to zero. Well, that's interesting because that means we can actually solve directly for t. That means that our t, our buoyancy variable, this is given by the vector displacement 
dotted with the gradient of t0. And we no longer have a differential equation that we need to solve for t. We have instead a relationship between our variable t and our vector displacement variable psi. All right, let's look at one of our other equations. Let's look at our continuity equation in this, in this context. So let's look at our continuity. So our continuity equation, this is that the divergence of u is equal to zero. Well, the divergence of u is also the divergence of d by dt of psi by our definition of u being the time derivative of a psi. And so this tells us that the divergence of psi is zero. Sorry, I'm saying psi, I should be saying xi. The divergence of xi is zero here. Um, the divergence of xi could be something non-zero and still have its time derivative be equal to zero. It's essentially a gauge freedom within the system, but we can choose to have the divergence of xi itself be zero. We can set the gauge to be zero and that's fully self-consistent. Okay, so what is our new system with this variable? What is our new system that we are solving? So our new system consists now of two equations. It consists of the divergence of xi is equal to zero. This is our continuity equation. And it consists of our momentum equation. I'm gonna write it down and then we'll explain what each of the terms is. So there's a d by dt, a second derivative of our vector displacement xi. There's our familiar gradient of our reduced pressure. And there's our um, buoyancy term alpha g times c dot grad t zero acting in the z hat direction. To remind ourselves of what these terms are, this first term, the second derivative of the vector displacement c, this comes from d by d t of u vector um, and our identity c, so d by d t of c is u vector. So this comes from taking our d by dt of c and substituting that in there and we can see we get a second derivative on our vector displacement. Over in our buoyancy term, um, this right here this is minus, um, th this is our t variable, which is minus our vector displacement dotted with the gradient of t zero. And that led to a sign change here to a positive sign rather than a negative sign. So here we are, we've taken our original system of three equations, one vector and three variables and we have reduced it by integrating our buoyancy term and substituting it in to the, um, into our momentum equation, we have reduced it to two equations, one vector in two variables. So now our variables of our new system, our variables of our new system are the vector displacement xi and the reduced pressure pho omega and we have a continuity equation and a momentum equation. In two dimensions, in two dimensions, solving the wave system now is the determinant of a three by three matrix. Whereas previously, um, before we had integrated the buoyancy equation, a was a four by four matrix. A three by three matrix can be much easier to take the determinant of by hand. Um, a four by four takes a little bit more care. So this trick of using a vector displacement can allow you to reduce the equations by one order, um, by one set of equations and variables, 
and in doing so, simplified the determinant that you would need to calculate to determine the dispersion relationship or the linear stability properties of your system.